Hello, welcome to the first video in a tutorial series on game design getting started by using Pico 8. This video series is primarily aimed at reference material for my students so that they can go back and <clears throat> replay um, any lesson that we had um, for reference or to catch up if they missed a class. However, it may be useful um, to anyone who wants to get started because it basically is uh, the class without being there. So, um, what are we doing? We are going to uh, get started making uh, video games using Pico 8. Uh, Pico 8, here, uh, we'll zoom in on the website. Um, Pico 8 here, uh, if, if you don't, if you need to find it, you can just go for any of these things I'm saying, just go to Pico 8. Um, in Google, in this Pico 8 Fantasy Console, uh, Lex Little Awful um, is the site. Uh, now, Pico 8 is um, <clears throat> $14.99. It is not free. Uh, runs Windows, Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi. Now, um, it's well worth the $15. I don't want to undersell that. It is not free. If you are an instructor, uh, your copy of Pico 8 licensing um includes all of your classroom machines so you don't need to buy a license for every machine very generous great um uh, great offer for academic also if you are in an academic setting a school or something uh, and teaching it out there is um i think click on schools here um <clears throat> the, every copy comes to the site-wide license i just talked about for the schools workshop public libraries ex educational spaces um and then um, take home licenses. Um, you can get here. They are available for purchase by registered educators in blocks of ten at three dollars or more, uh, at ten or more at three per license, uh, and come in the form of keys that can be distributed. So um, you just register on here as a teacher, um, and let them know how much you want to purchase. So you can get take home licenses for your students. Um, you're spending thirty dollars to get ten. So that's not a bad um idea, uh, or a bad way into this. Again, it's not free, but close enough. So why Pico Eight? Why are we using Pico Eight? Specifically, these limitations right here. Display is one twenty eight by one twenty eight in sixteen colors. The, the cartridges are 32K. They can actually be saved as a PNG. Um, so they can just be put into the um, metadata of an image file. It's very cool. Only four voice sound. Code is Lua. So uh, Lua is used in video game development. Um, a lot of times AI scripting and, and um, logic scripting uh, is done in Lua. Um, so, you know, you, even though this is not... C or C sharp, which you might actually end up using um, on like a Unity or an Unreal situation, um, you are still not wasting your time uh, if you feel you know uh, I'm not learning a real language. You you are in fact learning a real language. Um, <clears throat> and then we have two fifty six eight by eight sprites, and the map is one twenty eight by thirty two cells. Uh, there's a caveat about an overlap there. Um, but more than that, uh, at this point, let me just get into Pico 8. Um, by the way, you're going to see me do this a lot. So uh, if you're on Windows, if you're doing this on Windows, uh, and again, it runs on Windows, Mac, Linux, and Raspberry Pi. Um, and you got a window out here that, um, let me oh, come back, come back, thank you. Uh, you've got a window that you want to um, keep to the side. The Windows key and the left and right arrow keys can allow you to sort of pin a window to the to the side of the screen. This is great for Pico 8 development uh, because Pico 8 kind of runs here. You see this is the entire interface. It runs 120 by 8 by 128, so it's a square. Um, and if you have a 16 by 9 uh, monitor, which most computer monitors these days are, it fits really well to have a website up for reference while you're doing code near the window. So this is Pico 8. Um, this video, if you haven't figured out, it's just the introduction video. I hope you figured that out from the title. Uh, and also, yes, I am just doing this off the cuff. Um, I have I have my classroom notes up, but 
Um, I haven't, I'm not scripting or editing these. These are as is, so. If I run into any bugs or anything while I'm writing my own code, you'll see some real-time debugging happen. Um, okay. So, the Pico 8 Studio, uh, this is what we would call a virtual machine, a VM. It is a little bit more than a game engine. It's almost an entire operating system to itself. For example, you can type ls to list um, a directory. You can type uh, help to uh, see, H-E-L-P, to see what the commands are. So you can load games, save games, uh, run, or control R is very helpful uh, as a shortcut. Shut down to exit. Um, resume if you're doing any kind of breaking, reboot. Um, one that you'll want to do off the bat is install demos. Uh, there's changing uh, directory. Uh, you can reconfigure the key buttons and also explore, which we're going to look at a little bit uh, today. But pressing escape to toggle the editor view uh, is where we want to get started here. So when you go into uh, editor view here, um, the first screen that it brings up, this is the code screen. This is where you can type my code. Hello, code. Right? This is where you can type all of your code that will run your game. Uh, up here, you, you have some context sensitive, depending on you know, which mode you're in, and some information at the bottom uh, that if you hover over, sometimes changes and tells you what you're looking at. Then these over here are the other um, editors that you have at your disposal. The next one here, uh, this little face guy, um, is the sprite editor. So on this screen is where you can create uh, your your characters, you know, so you can have little sprites. Give him a hat. There you go, little hat dude. Um, and then you can create another one. And let's say over here, it's gonna be very quick, right? Because we're just doing demo. Here's my bricks. Um, that I'm gonna use in my level. And <clears throat> this allows you to create a whole bunch of sprites here. And you have these tabs here take you through all that. We're gonna cover this in detail later. I'm just giving an overview at the moment. So we don't have to keep referencing it every video. All right. Uh, this next screen here um, is the map screen. Um, and that's where we can take our bricks here. And then I can start to draw a level and say, ah, cool. Um, this is going to be my level. You know, maybe something to jump over right there. Um, you know, brick guy is going to be here. And he's going to have a good time jumping over bricks. Um, so, and again, um, you can access your four tabs. Now, one thing to know about Pico 8, um, the bottom of the map here, uh, this bottom half of the map, and sprite tabs 2 and 3 are shared. So what that means is, um, if you need a lot of sprites and not as much map, you can use 2 and 3 for more sprites. Um, if you want to use them for more level data, more maps, um, then you can use them for mapping, and you just won't use them for sprites. They are overlap, though. Um, we'll get into that maybe a little bit later in another video. But if you come down here, let's go into the sprite editor, and let's go to tab uh, 2, and on the sprite here, I'm just going to put some blue here, and on this one, I'm just going to put some yellow there. I'm just going to make some random sprites real quick to show what I'm talking about. If I come over to my map data, and I scroll down, you'll now see that are there tiles there? What's going on? Well, that's because I use that for sprites. Now, if I come here and then I go into my bricks and I say, hey, I'll put some bricks down here. I'm going to make levels down here. And then I come into my sprite editor and I go over to this tab. You're going to see some weird stuff down here because we're using that for map data. Um, so you can use two for the sprites. And three for map data, you can split them that way if you wish. So three would be over here in this bottom corner. Um, so it is it is up to you how um, you end up using that. But just know that going forward. Uh, Next we have the sound and the music tabs are the last two. Uh, I'm going to go brief on these because these are probably the most complicated pieces uh, to work with, and it's something you can kind of ignore um, while you get the rest up and running in your game, and then you can come back and add sound and music uh, later. 
so um this is very distracting i'm just gonna scroll off that for a second like, you know what? i'm gonna go here. um <clears throat> Here, uh, this first screen um, is kind of for making, um, you just draw out a sound, and then Spacebar to play it. And these are for making different sound effects that you can use in your game. Um, there's a whole bunch of different settings to the kinds of tones you're making. This down here changes the volume. Now you can slow this down. Kind of got a trashy thing here, so let's just go with the basics. So you can also use this to make um, patterns, and, and you can use this second view here. Um, so you got a, a, a pitch view, and then you got a note view. Um, this might be a little bit more standard to people who are familiar with music. Um, but what you have here is the note, the octave, the instrument being used, um, and then uh, the volume. And then last down here, you can have some effects. There are seven different sound effects here. Um, which are represented right here. So you have no effects, slide, vibrato, drop, fade in. Uh, again, I'm reading these right off the bottom here. If you just hover over these, they tell you what they are. Um, and you can create a whole bunch of different music patterns. You can use, I'll come over to this cheat sheet. I'm going to explain this cheat sheet here in a second. But you can use your keyboard uh, to enter some notes. So... Right, you get some notes in there, and then let's do some vibrato, and we'll do. Ah, uh, uh, on. There we go. And you hear the vibrato's got a little bit of a wiggle there. Right, and then um, I can come make another pattern. Let's do a pattern here. Uh, and I will change my octave up, and what we'll do is do some melody-like stuff. Just rhythmic. I'm not getting fancy here. Okay. So, we got some just wiggling notes. Um... And again, you got the sound effect view if you want to make um, more game noise, or you can compose little patterns, pieces of the music. And then you can come over here, um, and then these patterns, uh, this pattern actually, uh, I think it's more like a song. So we can check off, um, you can have up to four at once, uh, but you can see the first pattern I made is 01, and the second pattern I made is 02, and then there's even the sound effect uh, is down there. Um, but if I bring in O1, you got my little bass rhythm, and then I can bring in O2 at the same time. And in this way you can construct songs, and then you can have a whole bunch of different patterns here. You know, like say I just have the next pattern uh, doesn't have any bass, it just plays the top, right? Or I'll change the bass, you know? Um, let's say... Um, you make a whole bunch of patterns here, then you can encode, say, play song zero, play song two, play song one for your different levels or different things going on. Um, so that is sort of a quick overview of uh, Pico 8, but to get started, to dive in, it's better to look at some existing uh, stuff. So you hit escape to go back to um, the command prompt. And if you've done things that you don't care about, you just type reboot and it'll say, hey, do you want to, you really want to reboot? You say yes, and that will clear everything that you've done. You reset Pico 8 back to the beginning. Um, you can type install demos. 
and then it will install a bunch. You see, it says installing demo carts to demos. So if you hit LS, um, I have more than just demos here, but you can then use CD to change directory into demos. Um, and then you can see that you have all of these demos that do different things. You have collision there and collide, everything. A first good one to take, a, a, a real game to sink into. Play with them all. But a real game uh, to sink into is to load up GelPy um, here. And then you can just hit, you can type run or you can hit control R. And then you've got a whole game. Uh, oh, I died. So it's got this little Mario-like game called GelPy. Um, that you can go through. And then if you hit escape, um, it's got all the code here, and there's comments all through the code to sort of help you tell what it's doing. Um, you can go through the sprite sheet and look at all the different sprites that have been created. Um, you can see these here were used for some of the map stuff. Um, because they look a little wonky. Um, but you can see how they did all the different sprites. Um, get an idea of how, you know, you can do your own art. You can see how they did the animation frames for walking and jumping. There. Uh, in the map screen, uh, you can see how the, the map is put together. Um, and again, in the bottom, they've used some of the... Um, lower half for uh, map data and also um, we're using it a bit for the start screen in the background. That's cool. That's fine. You can see how they did the music and the sound effects here. So you can go through and the thing to go through here is um, change some of the values, change some of the code, hack it a bit. Um, Hack the, the graphics, put in your own character, you know, do your, replace the animation sprites and make it your own, you know, maybe, maybe gel pie here needs a hat, you know, everything is better with a hat. So go through, you know, and, and draw a hat and hack on to here, um, and just see how it's done. And this is not the only demo, like there are a lot of demos, so you can just load up hello, um, which is a very, uh, simple, uh, program. And just like, hey, let's just get started here. Um, there you go. That's all. Hello. It does. Um, so you can just sort of see how its uh, basics are working um, with different programs, different complexity. The other thing that you can run here is Splore. S P L O R E. So with Splore, um, Let's take a look at featured and hit update. Um, you can come here and you can see um, a whole bunch of games that the community's made. So I press X to start here. And, okay, this is some kind of weird, interesting Tetris platformer going on here. Um, that I'd have to figure out how to do, but, you know, we've got score screens, um, enemies, levels, you know, logic, a lot going on here. Once you've running the game, just hit, um, ex uh, re not reset cart, excuse me, exit the explore, and hit escape a couple of times, and you get into the editor, and you've got the game you were just running. So any game that you load through explore, you can go take a look at how that game was made, um, hack it, run it, play with, your, play with it, um, and learn things how it's made. So your assignment, if there is one, um, after this first video is to just get Pico 8 installed, um, get it up and running, install the demos, mess around with them, go to explore, check out some game, see what people are making. Um, and then, you know, go back, uh, when you're ready, uh, come back to the first video, uh, in this series, and we'll pick it up from there, and, you know, you'll have some experience working with the editor and just getting used to it. 